am Dr. Sujata Lakshmi, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics. Today, in this video, I am going to present a small topic on radioactivity. We know that radioactivity is a spontaneous and self-disintegrating activity exhibited by several elements having a mass number greater than 206. Also, radioactivity was discovered accidentally by Henry Becquerel in 1896 during the study of fluorescence exhibited by double sulfate of uranium activated by sunlight. It was also found that some sort of powerful radiations coming from the uranium salt affected the photographic plate wrapped in the black paper. Today we are going to discuss about the radioactive series. We know that what do you mean by radioactive series? We have seen that almost all the elements that are, that are lying in the range of atomic numbers from 82 to 92, they exhibit natural radioactivity. Some of the nuclei of these elements, they are unstable and they disintegrate by ejecting either alpha particle or beta particle or gamma rays or sometimes by fusion fragments also. Now what happens when an element emits alpha particle? Is there any difference when it is emitting a beta particle etc? Let's see what is going to happen. In a disintegration process, that is in a radioactive disintegration process, when there is an alpha particle emission, we can see that the mass number is getting lowered by 4. Mass number, it is represented by capital A, atomic number by capital Z. And when alpha particle emission is going on, we can see that the mass number is getting reduced by 4 and that atomic number is reduced by 2. Here we can see with the help of an example, uranium U238, when it is undergoing an alpha particle emission, the mass number is getting reduced by 4, that is 234 with the thorium and also the, mass, the atomic number is getting reduced by 2, that is 92 becomes 90 along with the emission of a helium nuclei. Along with that, when a beta particle is emitted, we can see that the mass number remains unchanged or we can say that the mass number is unaffected by the beta particle emission, whereas the atomic number is increased by 1. Here also we have provided an example of thorium. When it is emitting a beta particle emission, mass number remains 234, palladium also mass number is 234, whereas the atomic number 90 becomes 91. That is what happens when an alpha particle or a beta particle, either of them, when they are emitting, never both of them or more than one, they will be emitted by the atom during a radioactive disintegration. Now let's see what is going to happen with the radioactive series or what are the elements that are forming the radioactive series. Before that, going to that, we can say that the atomic number is a characteristic of an element. That is, it will imply the formation of a new atom. So the original atom we always call it as a parent atom and the new atom formed that is after disintegration of this parent atom when it is forming we call it as a daughter element. So the new atoms formed they are usually their radioactive nature and they further disintegrate so the new atoms. This chain of disintegration they continues till the atom which is stable and not radioactive is formed. So all the natural chain of disintegration process, they end with a stable element and we can, here we can see that in our series we are having four of the series we are having and three of them they are ending with a stable elect atom and this chain of disintegrations we call it by the name radioactive series and we are having mainly four important radioactive series, they are thorium that is 232 or we can call that series as thorium series, uranium 235 we can call it as actinum series, uranium U238 we call it as uranium series and all these three series they end with an isotope of lead whereas the fourth series that is a neptunium series they end with neptunium 237 that is they end with a bismuth 230, 209 as the stable element. Now, this is the brief graph showing the radioactive series. That is the number of protons when it is floated against number of neutrons. Here we can see that 
series of alpha emission beta emission they are for, they are happening and we are getting a stable nucleus here the stable nucleus is shown by this color that is 82 led 206 and you can see that alpha particle emission is taking place here which is shown by a pinkish color then we can see a beta emitter this is also shown by these colors so you can see that we are starting with the parent uranium 238 and ending with the lead that is 206 that is a stable compound of lead now let us go to discussion about the radioactive series among the four series the thorium actinum and uranium series we call it as a natural or a classic series whereas neptunium series we call it as another radioactive series and thorium series we can call it as 4n series neptunium 4n plus 1 uranium 4n plus 2 and actinum is 4n plus 3 series Starting with the uranium series, we can see that the parent is uranium U238. Here we have plotted atomic number against the neutron number in the graph and the chemical symbols are given just above the atomic number. Corresponding at, uh, symbols are given. For example, gold you can know it as 79, mercury 80, then those go so. So, in the uranium series, the parent element is uranium 92, that is 238. And the end product we are getting is the stable, that is isotope of lead or the stable lead. And it is undergoing 8 alpha particle emission and 6 beta particle emission. Alpha particle emission is shown with an arrow in the leftwards and the beta particle downwards with an arrow. And here we have to see what is the parent atom. What is the, how much disintegrations it is undergoing like alpha or beta and we are getting a stable, we are getting a stable lead isotope and this is what, we call, what is the uranium series. Next coming to your thorium series here also we are having, we are starting with the parent that is thorium that is 232. Here also alpha and beta particle emission is shown and here we are getting the stable compound that is lead having 208 as the number that is at least another stable isotope of lead that is 82 208 having an atomic number 82 and a mass number as 8208 so it is a mass number 4 and series so this is what we call the thorium series next is our actinum series apparent here in this element series is an isotope of uranium that is actino uranium series and it is having a Oh, sorry, it's gone. So, in the actinum series, we are having actino-uranium. Here it is shown here, actino-uranium. Its parent is 235 and the end product is again the isotope of stable lead. That is 207. It is shown here, stable. That is stable isotope 207 here. We have started with actinum-uranium. Here again, alpha particle and beta particle emissions are shown with respective arrows. And the next one or the last but not the least is the Neptunium series. That is with the discovery of unstable transuranic elements. That is another radioactive series was traced out. This was named as Neptunian series. Here the parent is a plutonium. That is uh, 239 or it is 241 neither. It is the longest lived member of the series as Neptunium, hence it is Neptunium series. Here it is not ending with a stable isotope of lead, rather it is ending with a stable isotope of bismuth that is 209 with 83 as the atomic number. So here the symbols of Neptunium series, the examples are already shown, everything is shown in the graph here. So let's conclude with this uh, table uh, showing the mass number, series name, parent name and the stable end product. We can see, we can remember it is from uh, reading from below to top, that is uh, bottom to top, right? Here we can uh, read it as a small form and AUNT, that is actinum, uranium, neptunium, thorium, AUNT, that is and you can remember for easy reference. Here also thorium 4N, neptunium 4N plus 1, uranium 4N plus 2 and 4N plus 3 for actinum series. And all the parent and the stable end product are also shown. And this video is a short, very short introduction for going to study detail about the radioactive series. Thank you.